We're talking today about slip stitches and specifically slip stitches with two colours. You may obviously have seen, if you've been with me these last few weeks, the rainbow cowl. And that's the knit along that we're doing this October. Just in a few days time we're getting started. And um, we're using two colours with a slip stitch pattern. And the whole idea, here we go, there's the other one. The whole idea is that it just gives you a really nice effect and it's actually quite a simple effect without having to use ferrile or intarsia techniques or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's the cowl. But I'm also going to show you today the other effects you can get with slip stitch patterns because slipping stitches with two colours can be really effective if you're just looking to make a difference in your knitting without learning far too many techniques and just feel a bit beyond. Um, with the slip stitch, it's still knitting as if you were knitting in stripes, one colour and then another colour and then another colour and then another colour, rather than two um, colours of yarn at once over the same row. So that's the beauty of the slip stitch. Yes, I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you knit with ease, confidence and joy. And let's get to it, shall we? Let's get to the tutorial. So I'm going to show you exactly how we do the slip stitch for the cowl. And that might give you an idea of whether you want to join us or not. There are full tutorials inside along with what to do if you make a mistake, all that sort of thing. Do join us if you want to. But here's that tutorial. I am sitting here finishing off this rainbow cowl. I'm knitting it in the third colourway with the avocado carbon and watery, which is this turquoise colour. So this is the one that's finished. I have almost finished the equivalent of that and I need to do one more plain round and then I can cast off. However, I wanted to show you the slip stitch that we're using. So this is a slip stitch pattern. It's not any fancy fur aisle or anything like that. It's an easy stitch. So this is very simply, when you're slipping stitches, you are moving the needle, the stitch, from the left needle to the right needle without knitting it and without purling it. You just move it from one needle to the next. And then for this round, I am purling every other stitch and then slipping the stitches in between. Purl and slip. Purl and slip. Purl and slip. Purl and slip. That is leaving the effect of having the yarn sat in front of the stitch which gives you this section of coloured lines over another colour's knit stitches. This gives, I love this effect, it was something that I'd not come across before. I'd come across the simple slip stitch in a plain colour and I just wanted to experiment and see how it would look with two colours. And it has worked out brilliantly. I really love the way that it just lets you move through the colours one at a time. But it's not this sharp change. It's more of a subtle change in from one colour to the next. And it seems even more subtle with these colours because they are so close together on the um, colour spectrum. Also, with the greys, it lets you move through them very gently, one at a time. And... Yeah, this is the effect that we're doing with this rainbow cowl. It is purl one, slip one, purl one, slip one, purl one, slip one, purl one, slip one. So that is the slip stitch that we are using in the rainbow cowl for the knit along. Do come along and join us. We've only got um, one week left, not even that, five days. We are starting opening up the 
forum on the 1st of October. So you have until the end of this month, the 30th of September to join. Let's look at some more slip stitch patterns with two colours because there are more. This one you can do in the round. A lot of them you do on flat needles. So you don't have to worry about using circular needles. Some of them you can only use on circular, but the ones I'm going to show you now, um, I've got one of each. This is another one for circular needles because it's using a very similar te technique to what I've just been showing you. So this is pretty much the same. I've just changed the number of stitches that I'm slipping in between the purl stitches. Here I'm alternating, I'm purling more stitches and there are fewer slips and there I'm slipping more stitches and purling fewer. So then I'm just changing from one to the other. On this side you can see that it's very regular. I'm doing exactly the same thing on every other row. This is really for knitting in the round because, let me show you, I had to carry the yarn across the back just like I had to with these samples that I was knitting. So let me show you now something that I've had for a while actually. I've had this book for a long time um, and I've always wanted to explore this and have a look at what is possible. But this just shows you the kind of thing that is possible. It's moving very obviously between two colours. It looks like it's quite complicated. Yes, you have to follow the pattern and make sure you get it all right <laughs> as you go, otherwise it will mix itself up. But once you've got the pattern, you know what you're doing. It's just every four rows you repeat yourself. So that's certainly something that's possible. I did this in a really last nice chunky yarn just so we could see it really easily. But let me show you all of the other options here. I do like this book, I must say. Um, it is the Stitch Library, The Knitter's Bible by Claire Crompton. It gives you the idea of knitting either with reading the stitches in a pattern, um, written out, or with the charts. So you have the choice. I have had a similar book like this where it is just simply the charts and I find that quite a difficult thing to um, follow, especially with needing to know what all the charts mean for cabling, for lace, for fair isle. That's fair isle is quite simple. But once you've got the cabling, the lace and everything else to read as well, especially if you're learning abbreviations in the written um, in letters, then it just gets more complicated as soon as you add in the charts. So a book where there's both options is actually really good. So here we have something called Hound's Tooth Check, we have the French Weave, we have Wave Stitch, and then there's Hexagon Pattern, Corn on the Cob, which is like a two colour um, moss stitch. If you've ever done moss stitch, also known as seed stitch, then you'll recognise this kind of thing. I really like that. Really like that. Um, squares, you can do that with slipping, slipping stitches. It, you will see what's happening you can just slightly see that that stitch is longer that's because on these plain rows on the rows where you're using the darker color you're slipping those stitches so you don't knit them on that row so that you're just waiting until you get to the um, lighter color again sounds quite complicated but once you do it you'll actually know what you're doing you'll actually know that it is easier than you think and that's the one that i just showed you you can do ripple stitches as well the hexagon pattern um, i've seen this called um bee um beehive so we can also do vertical stripes which seems impossible um mock tartan that is slipping stitch for a very long time <laughs> that's the slipping a uh, green stitch through about five different rows it looks great though and then there's an easy gingham where you're using three colours and a slip stitch, which is a fake fair isle across three different colours as well. So I really like the fact that it's just showing what is possible and encouraging you to just experiment. This is what encouraged me to just say, hang on, 
I've knitted this in plain colours before, this kind of pattern in plain colours. What would happen if I used two colours? And I just decided to experiment and see what I could do. And it worked. And it even looks really nice from the back as well. That is just beautiful. So that's always an option too. Wear it inside out. <laughs> so that is what we're doing. We are using a slip stitch. Relatively easy and it means that you're knitting fewer stitches on every other round. <laughs> there we go. I do hope that was interesting for you. It's certainly nice to see. You don't have to learn really complicated techniques with ferrile or intarsia or anything that just feels a bit beyond right now to do some interesting two-coloured knitting and especially um, with this rainbow cowl. It's just at two points where we're using two colours and the rest of it is plain. It just gives that gentle movement between the colours. So that's that. I do hope you've enjoyed this today because I was figuring out how to film overhead and straight to camera and realised that the best overhead filming comes when the camera's about here, which doesn't really work <laughs> when I'm trying to talk to the camera as well. So probably if I do demos from now on in, they will be um, straight to camera and then we will cut to a demo in the middle. Right, I will see you next week. Do go and join the knit along. I'd love to have you in there. I know lots of you YouTubers in here are um, following me and commenting regularly and I'd love to have you over in the knit along so we can get to know each other better. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting. <laughs>